Hey everyone, uh, my name is Richard. Today I'm going to show you how to clean the carburetor. This particular motorcycle here is a 2004 Honda VTX 1300. It's an S model. Uh, before you store away your motorcycle for the winter, you want to uh, make sure you get a fuel stabilizer, top up your tank, um, put the uh, fuel switch to the off position until basically, uh, basically until it runs and turns off by itself. Um, what I forgot to do was drain the float chamber, which caused my some of my main jets to clog up. Uh, so I had an issue with my choke. Um, usually, when you pull the choke when the engine's cold, you know you can hear the RPM going up. But uh, the issue is, you know, when I pull the choke, it pretty much dies. So I took apart part my carburetor. Today, I'm going to show you how I did it. Alright, so obviously I took off my fuel tank. Uh, there's two fuel lines that, that connect to the, uh, the petcock of the fuel tank here. You just want to take that off. Um, loosen the nut for the choke. There's a plastic nut that goes behind here. You just loosen that. Take this out. Uh, there's a fuel line. On the other side uh, is a breather hose go, which connects to the rear of the gas tank. You want to remove this. And the most difficult part is this part right here. Electrical connections for the uh, the gauges and stuff. Uh, you want to remove this before you lift out your your uh, fuel tank. Um, you come come over on the other side. Basis, basically, this is your intake manifold. You want to shove a rag in there so uh, you know debris don't get in. Um, these two hoses down here, um, they're similar in size. This is basically your your coolant. It, it runs through your carburetor. Uh, you don't necessarily have to drain. The, uh, the cooling system, but it would be a good idea that after you're done with the whole project that you uh, bleed out the air in the system. So usually when you take apart all your stuff you want to you know keep them organized on a rack like this. You, you, you want to use uh, safety glasses uh, when you're spraying carburetor cleaner all over the place might get in your eye and uh, you want q-tips uh, toothpicks. Toothpicks are nice to uh, remove parts, uh, small little parts that you can't reach into and also cleaning some of the ports. And uh, a sewing thread could help to, uh, well, what I do is I tie it off somewhere and I run it through some of these small holes on these main jets here and uh, put knots in them and depending upon how large the holes are, you know, I make more knots and then I run it through with carburetor cleaner and basically it cleans them. Another thing you want to use is a nylon toothbrush to brush some of this off and clean some of these parts. Uh, you got to be careful not to use any metal metal brushes or anything that will damage these because these are made out of brass and they're really really delicate. Um, what I did was I soaked my carburetor. Well, I, after I cleaned it off, all the large debris, I soaked it overnight with WD-40 and that uh, basically helps absorb some of the, the gunk and you could get it off later. Um, so yeah you want to remove everything from your float chamber which is uh, down here and uh, you want to remove all your uh, you know your, your air cutoff valve cover, uh, your, your, your throttle, your I'm sorry your, your choke your choke connection um, you want to remove your vacuum chamber cover, which is up here, and you want to remove your accelerator pump cover, um, your carburetor heater here, and have some O-rings. Um, so this this here is the uh, the, the float chamber, and you can see it's kind of gummed up a little bit. Um, right here is the uh, screw that opens up this valve in here and it drains the fuel out of the float chamber so you might want to do that next time you store your motorcycle so I bought this uh, part here from Glenn's VTX garage I'll post the uh, website here in a minute but uh, yeah it comes with this uh, for your for your main jet um, 
for your main jet that basically goes right there. This this is where most of the problem happens. Um, this this val this little uh, jet here, you're supposed to uh, turn it clockwise completely till it seats, and then turn it counterclockwise two and a half turns. But uh, if you live in higher altitude, you want to make adjustments, but it's basically impossible to do that while this carburetor sits in your motorcycle. Um, they sell, Honda sells a special tool that actually is D-shaped like that, and it basically removes the screw. But to see this particular tool here, I got it from Glenn's VTX Garage. It's called Permanent Mount AF Screw. It's for VTX 1300 only. Um, so yeah, this this came with the kit, which is really nice because the kit's only forty-five dollars. Yeah, it's better than going out and spending you know uh, eighty some dollars on on a tool that Honda sells. But what's nice about this kit is that it comes with this this adjustment screw that that mounts on and uh, comes with the O-ring washer spring and everything. So this screw here, this this rod is so long that you know after you mount your motorcycle, you could make your fuel adjustments um, easily from the outside um, so yeah here's your here's a here's it uh, here's my original right there if you could see it that's my original uh, main jet valve right there main, uh, that's my original uh, main jet that I removed um, so yeah you basically you're gonna replace um, re replace this unit here with with, uh, with what comes in this, in this kit. Just remove this rubber boot and install those new parts and throw them in there. So it's really nice. You make the adjustment from the outside. Um, when you're taking apart this carburetor, the, you want to watch out for small parts you don't lose, like this for this. Uh, throttle position sensor is like a little plastic piece in there that you want to make sure that you don't lose and uh, there's a float chamber that uh, there's a small needle that goes in there which comes out very easily you don't want to lose these parts so I suggest you store them in a ziploc bag like what I did um, so yeah like all your rubber parts here like the gaskets and stuff you want to remove all the o-rings and seals and everything you don't want to get those um, wet with gasoline or or uh, carburetor cleaner so you want to separate those and uh, <coughs> basically my carburetor uh, I got most of the debris off with uh, carburetor cleaner from the outside and what I did was I left it uh, I sprayed you know WD-40 and all these little holes you know all these little holes they, they all have a function so you want to you want to spray this hose this down pretty much with WD-40 get it nice and soaked overnight and what that does is that penetrates all the dirt and helps it clean um, uh, so the fuel the fuel hose the inlet is actually this large brass fitting right here um, after re after you carefully remove the line you want to look inside here this little hole I mean this big hole right here because it, ha it contains this fuel filter, I don't know if you can see it, it's a strainer pretty much and uh, it, it sits right in there okay so you wanna make sure you grab that as well alright just, uh, just to make a correction here this is the uh, sorry I got this mixed up this is the where the main jet goes and there's slow jet and this is the pilot screw here which controls the air fuel mixture uh, this is the the valve that I want to uh, change out, and this is actually the one that requires that special tool. So, uh, as far as the special tools you're going to need for this motorcycle, it's good to have, you know, the the tool for removing the uh, the pilot screw. I was talking to you about before it has this uh, D shape to it. Um, now, what I heard was there's some people. <laughs> that actually use a uh, 22 caliber, caliber sh shell casing and what they do is they put a little dent in it I, I've never tried that but I, I suppose that could work as well 
But another good uh, tool to have uh, is this tool that you can buy at Honda. Uh, it's a special tool for um, doing your valve adjustments. So this particular tool you're going to need for this bike as well. Uh, Alright, so what I'm holding here is the, the slow jet. I removed it and you see that little pinhole um, directing against the sunlight. Um, so yeah, this, this hole is a little clogged here. Um, you want to clean it out so that you can see, you know, so that the light, light can pass through that orifice. Um. Alright, so I'm going to clean my main jet here. And uh, as you can see, you have a, I don't know if you can see this, there's a hole, this orifice. It, it was pretty gummed up. And uh, it's pretty hard to clean these things. I mean, if you can't get the, you know, the sewing thread to get through there to clean it. Uh, you could always use compressed air, which I have here. Um, now this this particular attachment came with my vacuum pump, so I'm just uh, basically using that tip there to uh, put my jet in like so and sp spraying out the gunk. And believe it or not, it does a really good job compressed air to get this uh, this gunk out of here. So yeah, I'm, wow, I'm amazed. Um, Orifice did get a lot bigger, so yeah, that's that's how I got my uh, my main jet to clear. All right, now here, this is my slow jet. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Um, so yeah, there's it's it's pretty much gummed up that orifice, and I'm gonna spray it with compressed air. See what. All right, so this is my main jet. So what I did was I ran it through uh, the thread back and forth and uh, got it cleaner, a little bit more cleaner there and uh, just get your toothbrush and what I do is I uh, I just use regular gasoline and I just dip it in here and, uh, you want to clean the threads you know try to get it clean as possible and then uh, spray some carburetor cleaner um, with this and then you know run it through with compressed air again should get that clean in there so another thing that works out well is getting your toothbrush and uh, just soak it with gasoline and you want to poke into those those holes and those bristles you know they make their themselves way in you just want to take your time cleaning these parts uh, you don't want to rush through them. Then you go ahead and get your airline. Blow the rest out. Like so. So. That's how I cleaned my uh, main jet. Alright, so here's my float plant. Float pan. Uh, just came out of the carburetor at the bottom. I brushed it with uh, <coughs> my toothbrush and gasoline. I just rinse it over with carburetor cleaner see how clean it is before then <coughs> alright another area that you want to clean well is you, know, you open the throttle plate and <coughs> get your toothbrush in there and clean the, the corners and uh, if you pay close attention on these side walls here you'll see small holes make sure you run your your compressed air through it and this one is all cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, just a helpful hint. Uh, it <clears throat> if you don't want to lose these screws, you know, like this screws here from my float pan, uh, just after you remove the float pan, you want to screw them back in. That's what I do. Um, so I don't lose these uh, screws where they go. Um, <clears throat> also for this accelerator pump uh, rod assembly here, uh, the, the cap does have a, a, a spring to it and you don't want to mix this spring up with the uh, with the uh, air cutoff air cutoff uh, air cutoff valve cover here there's another there's another spring that's similar in size see that I don't know if they're actually the same uh, spring just in case you don't want to get them mixed up. 
Alright, so I got my main jet in, and let me see here, I can have my toothpick. Alright, I got my main jet in, and then I got my um, slow jet in. And this piece right here, which is the pilot screw, I'm going to do that last. <clears throat> Since I could just throw on the, the uh, float cover. <clears throat> but for the float cover, <coughs> excuse me, the gasket, I recommend you get a new one. If you plan to use reuse the old one, that's fine, but just make sure, you know, you be really careful with it. And don't get any chemicals on it, because it might, you know, expand or contract. Uh, but before you throw it back in there, I recommend putting a really, really light coat of uh, silicone. So, basically, that's what I'm going to do next. Alright, I'm putting this uh, thing back together. If you have a float level gauge, you basically want to check this distance here. Uh, most of the times it's fine. Um, just make sure, you know, when you put this back in, you just be very careful with it. Um, so yeah, here's my pilot screw replacement that I got. <coughs> There's this long rod here. Uh, you you want to basically, by the way, this replaces the, the original uh, pilot screw. And what goes in here is a spring first, um, the little metal washer that comes with it, and the O-rings last. And you might want to lubricate this a little bit, maybe with like WD-40 before you screw it back in there. And uh, at higher, R I mean, uh, I'm sorry, at higher altitude, you have to make an adjustment. So if you're writing, you know, at a higher altitude, you might want to screw this in half a turn. Alright, so before you throw on the float cover, um, <clears throat> you want to throw the the float needle that's under here. See that it's sitting right there? That's the float needle that goes in through this hole. Uh, this hole right here. Oh shoot! And then basically, what's holding the float down is this needle here. Just the way you took it off, you just slide it right in and it just goes right back inside. And then you throw on the float cover and that's it. That's that's for the bottom part. But like I said, if you want to throw this uh, old gasket in there, just put a really really thin coat of silicone and um, not too much of it, just a little bit. Alright, now putting this thing back together, let's look at the top of the carburetor. Uh, I can show you real quick. Here's the vacuum. Diaphragms is chamber. The cover for it, I mean. Oh, here we go. There's a cover for the vacuum chamber. If you look at it closely, um, you know, you have four screws that go in, but when you actually put this thing in, uh, if you look carefully here on the cover, um, there's a notch there and a notch there. So, and these two sides don't have it, so you gotta line it up just right. So that the notch actually goes over. There's actually a. <coughs> if you look at where the the cover sits right there, see that notch, and one across, and the other sides don't have it. So if you put this cover 90 degree out of placement, it's not going to sit right. Just to let you know, in this uh, diaphragm here, this also acts like a gasket. And you don't really need to put silicone or anything, just make sure you put the screws on tight. And I recommend using uh, number two size Phillips. Uh, if you use the wrong size, you're just going to strip, strip, strip out the screws. And you don't want to damage these screws either. So let me get back to putting this back together and make sure, you know, for your, your covers that you put in, don't forget to put your springs on. And they don't. It doesn't really matter which way it goes. Um, just don't mix up the springs because I don't know if they have different tensions. And uh, getting this carburetor cleaned uh, with gasoline and carburetor cleaner, I think uh, it's a pretty decent way to clean it. You know, with the toothbrush and stuff. And you know, wherever you could get in these small holes with um, a toothpick, maybe or a Q-tip. But I re don't recommend using. You know. Like I said before, anything metal because you might mar, you know, these uh, brass fittings. Alright, so before you throw the 
to choke back in there you want to lubricate this bit right here and uh, just put it in there and screw it back on and make sure you tighten it not too tight <coughs> alright so you want to I'm almost done putting this thing back together now on this uh, you want to put some oil on that uh, accelerator pump linkage there there's a collar a plastic collar or washer and the metal washers at the bottom and then you got the lock washer at the very bottom and you want to put lightweight oil um, well what I like to use is this is uh, Lucas heavy duty air tool lubricant it's uh, really thin oil anyways uh, putting this back together also the uh, the vacuum see the vacuum cover here the uh, the notch would be on the left front side if you're looking at it um, this side is their air cleaner housing and this side goes to your intake manifold so you want to notch that little notch right there it's gonna be on the top left side so and uh, make sure you get the screws on there tight uh, the good way to clean these carburetors I heard is uh, getting it sonic cleaned uh, in other words I mean there's places out there that does cleaning with ultrasound but um, you know they're, they're gonna get dirty again so uh, you know just regular gasoline and uh, carburetor cleaner with compressed air is, is a way to go uh, this project here is gonna you know save you roughly three hundred dollars and you know you get to have fun with it. Alright, so this last part here, um, I'm going to screw this part in the, that replaces the pilot screw. So, so you have the uh, spring, washer, and o-ring. And it's also good to put maybe like a drop of oil on that o-ring before you screw it in. So basically you want to screw this in all the way, not to... <coughs> Not too tight though, but you want to just screw it in until it seats on the bottom or it stops turning. And then you want to turn it counterclockwise, two and a half turns, roughly. And uh, what's nice, what I like about this tool, like I said before, is you get to make adjustments, um, you know, without having to remove your carburetor. You can just, you know, reach under where your throttle, I mean your, um, your yeah, your, thro your, your uh, throttle adjustments. So this, uh, so this insulator band here, when you throw it back on, when you get it, get this mounted on your carburetor and into your intake manifold uh, inlet, you want to tighten these screws, not too tight, but you want to tighten it so that these, this collar compresses and then compresses about a quarter of an inch. And that's where you want to stop. Another good thing to clean while you have your side covers off is your spark plug. So you want to take them out and uh, clean it with a wire brush. Get it really good around the insulator, around the center electrode and the side electrode. And uh, you want to regret gap it. It's going to have to be in between 31 and 35 thousandths of an inch. And then just tighten it down about 10 foot pounds. And what I like to do is I like to rinse, you know, spray this off with uh, carburetor cleaner before I throw it in there. And uh, just put a little bit of anti-season on the thread, and I put some dielectric grease on on this end here where the uh, boot goes in. All right, just before I throw on everything, I just want to show you something. Um, so these two hoses connect to the air housing, air cleaner housing, and this is the AF screw, the pilot screw that I, reached, I uh, replaced. <coughs> so it's really nice having it out here. You get to, you know, manually adjust it from the outside if you need to there's any else two changes weather changes um, so yeah it's gonna be sitting here right next to the you know the throttle adjuster so that's nice all right so pretty much I got everything in uh, carburetor has no gas in there so uh, you got to turn the fuel switch on and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the throttle a few times hopefully that'll get the gas going uh, right now the accelerator pump is pumping as I'm opening and closing up the 
you know, the throttle. So that kind of helps the gas to get in the carburetor. Uh, so what's next is uh, I have the starter fluid that I'm going to spray into the intake of the carburetor right now. I don't have the air cleaner yet, but I just want to spray some of this to get it, help it start it. Let's turn the key. See what happens. All right, almost wanted to start. Some more starting fluid. Got to help get the gas going for a little bit. Like I said, carburetor is dry right now. Got to keep trying. Let the carburetor fill up here. Hey, my switch is on. Let's put it on reserve for now. I don't know if I have enough fuel in there. Spray some more starting fluid. Carburetor's dry. Starting fluid in there. All right, now I'm squeezing the throttle, and I don't know if you could see fuel squirting out of there. So the carburetor is now full. It's filled with fuel now. Let's get it started again. I'm going to go ahead and try to pull the choke. Alright, so as you saw there, when I pulled the choke, you heard the RPM go up. So, yeah, uh, the carburetor is clean now and the, that's working properly. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me. Thanks for watching.